Welcome back. Now, we've already heard some of the horrors Rochdale has hidden in the depths of its history. But that's not all. The old town used to be used as a stop for travellers on their way to the new industrial city, Manchester. To pass the time, ghostly stories of ghouls, goblins and witches used to be told. But were these in fact true? John Cole separates the fact from the fiction. Rochdale, being an old town, has more than its fair share of ghost stories and legends. Whole areas are reputed to be haunted, and St Chad's Church is said to have been built by goblins. In 690 AD it was decided to build a church in the town, but every time the builders lay the foundations in the valley, goblins removed everything to the top of the hill. Eventually the humans gave up and let the goblins build the church where they wanted it, and where it stands to this day. Just outside the town, Healydale had, and still has, its fairies chapel, where fairies and elves can allegedly be seen playing in the river. Nearby Prickshaw is haunted both by a black dog and the spirit of a witch, while the doldrums above Milnro is haunted by a witch's black cat. The belief in witches was common and people would do anything to get rid of them. In 1597, Alice Brearley of Castleton was sentenced to death for killing two men by witchcraft. An ancient charm to guard against witches, found at Healy Hall, contains the devil's magic number. Six, six, six. The number of the beast. And belief in witches continued until modern times. A woman called Ellen Chapman, better known as Nell Racker, lived in Rochdale in the 1920s. She was regarded as a wise woman or a healer by adults and as a witch by children. For a silver coin, Nell Racker would tell your fortune, dispense her homemade medicines or share her tales of local ghosts and murders. One such story related to the Rake Inn at Littleborough. During the English Civil War, a troop of roundheads was stationed on the top of Blackstone Edge. There was little fighting, but a single cavalier was killed outside the Rake Inn. The roundheads were then ordered to build a huge road over the edge to carry their carts and weapons, a hard and boring job which took over 12 months. The ghost of the cavalier found this so funny that apparently his laughter can still be heard in the pub to this day. <laughs> The single most haunted area of Rochdale was the Bourne around Toad Lane, with manifestations including, of all things, a ghostly rabbit. Far more frightening are the residents of a nearby graveyard dug up in around 1910, who allegedly take it in turns to wander around the area. And then there's the spirit of a young man seen walking through the walls of Rochdale Market as recently as... Who would have thought that Rochdale had so many ghostly goings on? But the worst is yet to be told. You're about to hear of a horror so terrifying that not even the Bram Stokers or Stephen Kings of this world could have imagined. Bogus were mischievous spirits, a bit like poltergeists, who would move furniture and throw objects around the room. <laughs> Manchester had one at Boggart Hole Clough, and Berry's Grizzlehurst Boggart used to demand animal sacrifices. The most famous Boggart of all haunted Clegg Hall, just outside Milne Row. On the 12th of April, 1890, the Rochdale Observer reported how a man walking the canal towpath around Clegg Hall was chased by a terrifying black shape, a bit like a huge dog or a man. 
It failed to report that Clegg Hall was a pub at the time, but sightings of ghosts were common in the area. The present Clegg Hall dates from 1610, but the original Boggart story relates to the earlier wooden building on the same site. In 1241, so the story goes, Henry, Lord of Clegg Hall, rode off to the Crusades, leaving his two sons in the care of his brother, Richard. In order to inherit the hall, Richard had long planned the death of the children. This was his opportunity. On the night after Henry rode off to the Crusades, Richard crept into the room with the two sleeping boys. Silently, he drew a knife from his belt and he slit the throat of the younger brother. The elder Ralph woke up and struggled with his uncle, but Richard stabbed him through the heart and he fell down dead next to his brother. Lord Henry returned from the Crusades to be told by Richard that his two sons had been killed in a terrible accident. Now all Richard had to do to inherit the hall was to kill Henry. Richard knew of a secret passage connecting Clegg Hall to nearby Stubley Hall and he crawled along it to a secret chamber leading to his brother's bedroom, knife in hand. As Richard crept up on his sleeping brother, the ghost of Ralph appeared in front of him. The spirit cried out, Father, beware! Henry woke up to see the ghost of his son hovering between him and a terrified Richard. Richard screamed and ran out of the room to the parapet, pursued by the tormented spirit of his young victim. Richard dived off the wall and plunged to his death, accompanied by the sound of unearthly laughter. From that day on, Clegg Hall was haunted by the ghost of Ralph Clegg, which being a child after all, was playful and mischievous, the wildest boggart in the whole of Lancashire. The tale of the Clegg Hall boggart was passed down through the generations as the hall went to rack and ruin. Thankfully, Clegg Hall has been restored to its former glory. It looks as good as new. So there can't be any ghosts there now, can there? brings us to the end of John Cole's horror stories of foul deeds and ghostly stories. But who knows, perhaps there's many more secrets waiting for somebody like John to rediscover. So watch out, as Manchester isn't the only place with a hidden dark side.